pray to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of those who prosper in their way, because of those who make wicked schemes. Let go of anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It surely leads to evil deeds, for evildoers will be cut off. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked will not be. You will look diligently for their place, and it will not be. But the meek will inherit the earth and will delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and grind their teeth against them. The Lord will laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay those on the upright path. Their sword will enter into their own heart and their bows will be broken. Better a little that a righteous that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. The Lord knows the days of people of integrity and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they will be satisfied. This is a wonderful psalm. It, when I first became a Christian, this became one of my favorite psalms. And to this day, it's still just a wonderful psalm. It's all about trusting in God and trying to do good and trying to be faithful. So many things in our lives have to do with we are powerless. There's a lot of things we can't control. And so we simply have to say, God, I can't control a lot of things in my life, but I'm going to be as faithful to you as I can be in the things that I can control. I don't live a perfect life, God, but I'm going to trust in you and I'm going to try to do good every day. And so it says, Commit your way to the Lord every day. And you know, what will happen is you come to the light every day, you'll be led every day. You will be guided. Uh, many times you'll be surprised the way you're led, the way you're guided. Uh, our lives, we really don't control our own lives, you know. A huge amount of other things are working in our lives. And so it's very, very important that you and I don't make the mistake of thinking that we're the king or queen of our own lives, we're the master of our own fate. Uh, we can do whatever we want to do, when we want to do, how we want to do it, because there's, even if you don't believe in God, that's sort of insanity. Uh, when the police officer pulls you over, <laughs> I hope you're saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, right away, sir, right away, ma'am, because you're not in control of your life at that point. <laughs> and, you know, when you become ill and need to go see a doctor, you acknowledge that you're not in control of your health situation and that you need help. And that, it really, that's true every moment of every day. We do not have total control of everything in our lives. And it's really important that we ask to be guided every day. And this second paragraph is very important. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And then twice it says, do not worry. Do not fret. Because people that fret, it leads to evil deeds. Isn't, isn't that interesting? If you're worrying constantly, of course it's going to lead you to evil. Of course it's going to lead you away from the Holy Spirit and from God. So 
Many people, and it's just amazing to me, and I'm guilty of this too from time to time, live in a what-if world. What if? Well, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? Well, what if, what if? Number one, from a mental health standpoint, that's a good way to drive yourself crazy. <laughs> and believe me, I have a lot of people I work with, they're doing that. You just can't live in a what-if world. You've got to live in a world where God loves me, God will give me strength no matter what happens, and I'm going to be okay, and the people I love are going to be okay. You've got to live in that kind of world. If you're right now living in a what-if world and you're worrying about this, you're worrying about that, worrying about everything else, you are in deep trouble spiritually, psychologically, and emotionally. My grandpa Norris uh, had a problem with alcohol. He was a very functional person, but on weekends, he would find one of the three bars in Wheatland, Wyoming. And uh, he would drink to where he couldn't drive home. And then the family had to go out and find which bar that Grandpa Norris was in. And then one of the kids, he had six kids, one of the kids would drive his car home and, and the other would drive Grandpa home in their car. And uh, Grandma said, if you keep doing that, you're not going to be the father of these kids. You're, you're gone. And so he started making beer in the, uh, the bathroom. <laughs> and homemade beer is like not three tube Kansas beer. <laughs> it's like 20% alcohol, you know. And so because Grandma, we didn't have... AA and NA and things like that, and we didn't have Al Anon and R Anon in those days, so Grandma was untreated, so she just did what untreated people do. Grandpa farmed with two great big old white horses. His son bought him a tractor, the tractor just sat in the, in the barn, and he farmed with the two big white horses. Well, once you hitch up those horses and you're in the field, you're committed. So Grandma would boil raisin water you see where I'm going? Till it became the color of the brew. <laughs> and then she'd take half the brew out and throw it away and put the raisin water in and stir it. And Grandpa would come in after he'd been working all day and he'd, he'd test, test it every day. He said, boy, this brew is just not what it used to be. <laughs> Poor Grandma was untreated. She was doing the worry, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. And so when I was seven years old, I spent the entire summer with Grandma Norris and Grandpa Norris. And she started teaching me how to worry. And my mom was the untreated adult child of an alcoholic father, so she started... She gave me graduate seminars <laughs> in how to worry. And I grew up well-trained in worrying. That is a hard thing to break. It, it, it actually creates almost what you can call a trauma loop in your brain, where you, it automatically worries. As, like a person in combat, when there's a loud explosion, they'll think they're back in Vietnam or in Afghanistan. And, and that's how this what-if thinking, it gets hardwired in your brain. So if today you're doing what-if thinking, say, God, teach me to trust in you and not to worry. And let me tell you, it is hard to break that trauma loop of what-if, 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 what-if. But I'm telling you, what I'm telling you right now is absolute solid gold spiritually and emotionally and psychologically. And oh, by the way, worry affects you physically. Your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate increases, and the capillaries in your blood, which deliver the oxygen to your body, they tighten up. <laughs> it's a bad thing physiologically to worry as well. And then the author of 
Psalm 37 goes on. For yet a little while, and the wicked will not be. You will look diligently for their place, and it will not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek who refuse to worry and to trust God will inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and grind their teeth against them. The Lord will laugh at him, for the Lord sees his day is coming. When you refuse to worry and you trust God, bad doors will close and good doors will open. It doesn't mean that sometimes bad things won't happen to you, but it means that you have an inner strength and inner peace that absolutely nothing can shake. And then the last paragraph. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay those on the upright path. Their sword will enter their own heart and their bows will be broken. And this is a really significant sentence here. Better is a little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. The Lord knows the days of people of integrity, in other words, people that are trying to follow God, and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in the evil time, and in days of famine they will be satisfied. I know of a missionary couple in China when the communists took over China. It was just absolute chaos. Uh, there were, China used to be full of hundreds and hundreds of little kingdoms. And uh, when communism took over, it began to sweep out all these kingdoms into one. Uh, and it was just chaos. There was famines and people were short of food. And there was this Christian missionaries in the middle of China Everybody else was starving, and they always had plenty of food. And so the Chinese people in that entire section of China called them the people whose God feeds them. Isn't that exciting? And uh, I don't know if you've had this happen, but I know myself has happened, and with many other people I know, I didn't know where the next meal was coming from, and the meal came. And I realized after a while, you know, this is God. This is God guiding and directing and helping. You know, even in really desperate times, we can believe in God. I'm going to end with a personal story of a tremendous faith in God. So I'm in Kiev, Ukraine, and they took me, there's underground catacombs in Ukraine where all the, the godly people have lived. And the Russians made fun, at that time Russia was an atheistic nation, they made fun of the Christian faith of the Ukrainians. And so one of the Russian officers went down in the catacombs underneath Ukraine uh, and they actually took us down there and showed us. And they have, there's several saints that they have, and, and their, their bodies are laying there. This is not Protestant Christianity. This is Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Their bodies are laying there, and they have on their, their robes and their ecclesiastical garments. And a Russian officer said, this is a bunch of baloney. And there was a several hundred, they've been worshiping in God in, in, in Ukraine for 1,200 years. And he took his pistol and he shot one of the corpses and fresh blood flowed out. <laughs> and it freaked the, the Russians out so much that they left, they didn't destroy the catacombs. They didn't, no, no Russian officer would go down in there again. And Those Ukrainians kept following God, even though the Soviet Union tore down their greatest cathedral in downtown Kiev and built a 
KGB secret police uh, building so that they could keep an eye on all the people in central Kiev. And so they took me to downtown Kiev and this major standing next to me and he says, you see that cathedral? That used to be the KGB headquarters for the secret police of Russia. We rebuilt that cathedral working seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We rebuilt the cathedral in one year. And what I'm telling you is the weak people of Ukraine, controlled by all the Russians, continued to follow God. And they would not let atheism or brute force keep them from following God. And as soon as the Russians who did not believe in God and the Soviet Union left, they immediately tried to rebuild their faith in God by rebuilding that cathedral. I'm an American, you know, and, and if I said it in Russian, I'm an Amerikansky. <laughs> But the Ukrainian faith in God just incredibly blessed me. Here's this weak people. Here you and I are, weak people. But I'll tell you what, you can do mighty things. You can do mighty things when you pray, when you serve God, when you love and help other people. Stop what if thinking. Just let it go. And say, God, no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to be all right. EJ, I hope when you go to your testing this week, you'll feel safe and feel loved. I hope that CJ Shippy, when she goes, and getting ready for surgery that she feels, and most of us are not looking at doctors like EJ or surgery like CJ, but whatever happens today and this week and the rest of your life, say, God, I refuse to worry. I know, do not fret, do not fret, it leads to evil. Do not worry, do not worry, it leads to evil. Trust God, it leads to good. It leads to peace. It leads to good psychological health, physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. Keep company with God. God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. And when you trust God, your life is inflecting and influencing the entire planet. Would you bow with me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you for examples of people who have served you till the very last breath. We thank you for Richard Kreider. We thank you for CJ. We thank you for the Selly family. We just thank you for every Christian that we have known and that we know now. Help us not to worry, but to totally trust you till our very last breath. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.